In the early 2000s, a craze took over the world in the form of pocket monsters on card. Yes, in today's video I'll be sharing my thoughts and reviewing the Pokemon trading card game on the Game Boy Color. Now I'll say this is for Game Boy Color, but technically it's for Game Boy and Game Boy Color as it is a black cartridge. The black cartridge means it can play black and white on your normal Game Boy or Game Boy Pocket, or full color on your Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advanced. This also means you can play it on your Super Game Boy for the Super Nintendo. This will be the footage you're seeing on today's review. Now you might be saying this game doesn't look like it's in full colour, but that's because I'm playing it through the Super Game Boy which is meant for Game Boy games. So it's not black and white, but it shows some colour. If you play it on Game Boy Colour or Game Boy Advance, you will see a full colour game. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, talking about Pokemon cards! Back at school many years ago now, all the cool kids have Pokemon cards. Well, I thought I was cool. And I still have the full base set displayed in my room. Ah, oh, the memories. Back at my school, no one really played the proper game. They mainly traded the cards, and this game has a bit of both. The basic controls are simple. D-pad to move, A button to select stuff, B to run, and one thing I did find a bit strange was the save option was called Diary. I don't know why they chose to call it Diary, it can be quite confusing, but obviously that is how you save the game, by updating your diary. But yeah, nothing bad with it, I just thought it was a bit strange. Visually the game looks good, in many ways it's better than blue, red and yellow, because it is in full colour. I was about to say HD and that would have been wrong. Each card also has full artwork from the original card itself, and they look really nice. They even tried to make the cards look shiny. Well, they added sort of diamonds to them. Kind of looks shiny. But anyway, you get the idea, it looks good. Moving on to the sound, and what do you expect? It's a Pokemon game. It sounds amazing. Just listen. Now moving on to the story, you might be thinking, but it's a card game, how could there be a story? Well, there is kind of a story, it's not really much of a story, and I keep saying story too many times. The story is kind of copied from the other Pokemon games, I mean at the start you meet a professor and he gives you a choice of three decks, Charizard, Bulbasaur or Venusaur. And after choosing your deck, you then have to face three leaders and get their coins. So not badges this time, but coins, and then you have to face basically the Elite Four. So it's basically a Pokemon game, but in card form. That is literally, I mean it says it on the box, it's a Pokemon training card game. So that's what it is. And to get to each club leader, you need to go to their clubs, and they are scattered around the map. Now there's not much adventure to this game, you just literally click on the club, and you go to it. But you can't face the leader straight away, you have to do some sort of task like defeat four of their club members, or three of their club members, or find their club members and find them. Now to increase your card numbers and to improve your decks and make new ones, you have to beat other players and they'll give you two boosters if you defeat them. Now this is where the game gets frustrating, as it's a card game and it's all about the look of what cards you pull from your deck. It can be very frustrating, especially when you don't get the cards you need and your opponent just basically thrashes you, but on the other side of it, you could pull exactly what cards you need and you can wipe them off the table with only like winning one prize. So it's very random but it can be very frustrating at the same time. So this can result in you breezing through the game or really struggling. Now when it comes to characters it's very bland. No one in the game really has a personality, not even the gym leaders, or club leaders sorry. Well the club leaders do kind of have a little bit of personality just because of the way they look. I mean this guy has a fire background, it must mean he's got something to do with fire. Or he's just set himself a fire. And this guy has a spoon, now you know what that means. Who likes yoghurt? 
Yeah, as I was saying, there isn't much characters in this game. You even have a rival. I mean, I've met him like twice. I don't know who he is. And why is my rival? But yeah, you do have a rival for some reason. Whoa, sorry. Wait a minute. There is one person in this game that is definitely a character. And I apologise. I'm about to say his name and probably completely ruin it. It's Imakinui? Imakinui? Um, he's a pop star, apparently. Anyway, he's amazing. He's such a character in this game. You can find him hidden in corners of random clubs. You can't say which one it is because each time it's a random club, as I just said. And if you defeat him, he'll give you four booster packs instead of two. So if you find him, definitely worth giving him a game. The only items in this game, except from Pokemon cards, of course, is the leader coins themselves. They're not just bragging rights of beating that leader and to get you to the final bit at the end. But you can also put them into the machine and create decks with them, which is very cool. All you need to do is go back to Labrity at the start of the game and go to the right. Now you put your coin into these machines and if you have the right amount of cards that you've collected, you can start building new decks, which is so awesome. I never knew this was in the game when I first played it years ago, but coming back to this is actually a really smart idea. Overall, this game took me about 15 hours to complete. Now that could be higher or lower depending on what random cards you get in your deck. So take that with a pinch of salt because it took me 15 hours but it could take you 10 or it could take you 20. I really did enjoy playing this game but the gameplay can be quite repetitive as you're doing the same thing over and over again and like I said before it can be frustrating. If you're a Pokemon fan and used to collect Pokemon cards back in the day then definitely pick this game up and give it a go. In my opinion I would stick to the main series of Pokemon games. It's more of an adventure and catching Pokemon is so much more fun than collecting the cards. But if this does look quite interesting to you then check out the free Pokemon trading card game online that you can just download for free and play people online and collect all new editions of cards. It doesn't have the old ones but it has the new ones and it's free so definitely check that out that's awesome. Thank you so much for watching my review. If you like the video please give it a thumbs up and if new channel want to subscribe. Also comment below on other games you want me to review or play. Bye!